All right, we're live. Welcome. What's up, Muff? What's going on? Hey, gals. Hello, how are you? Doing well. Uh, Chris, you want to take it away and get started on the openers? Yeah, am I coming through clear? I'm having some connectivity issues on my end. All right, now no, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, all right, cool. Um, yeah, Lisa, thanks for joining the show tonight. Uh, really looking forward to it. You know, this is a free, open, flowing conversation. So, um, how we typically start this is just do some really quick round of intros. So, um, it's just your name, your age, where you're from, and then your relationship status, and then essentially what made you want to come on the show tonight. So, um, we'll start with uh, thing one and thing two in the, here in the window, uh, Luna and Zoe. <laughs> Should you go first, Zoe? Okay. Okay. <laughs> my name is Zoe, and I've been like born and raised in Florida my entire life. I'm 21 years old, and I've been single about a year now. And I wanted to come on the show to, I don't know, kind of get some info on your guys' insight. I just like the male's perspective, so this would be interesting. Um, and my name is Luna. I'm tw also 21 years old. I'm from Florida. I was single. <laughs> mostly single up until like three weeks ago which maybe we can get into later um <laughs> no i wouldn't say i'm completely in a relationship but i'm heading in that direction it's one of those so situationships it's that... i hopefully it's better than a situationship <laughs> okay. we hope for good outcomes out of mm -hmm. a situationship um and then i'm on the show because my friends Zoe invited me so <laughs> all right well welcome ladies Great. thank you ali hi i'm ali I'm way older i'm four and uh, I'm from South Carolina, Charleston, but I've been in Florida for six years. Um, I'm newly separated. I was married 12 years. I'm not divorced. <laughs> um, but before that, I was like a serial dater, like never been single. So this is my first time being single literally since I was like six. So it's been interesting because I, I didn't know anything about what this was really like until about six months ago. <laughs> Is is the audio clipping for you too, Moff? Just a little bit. I think it's just the phone. Um, but just Ali, you don't have headphones or anything, right? No. Okay. Old. I don't have just, any. Um, Ali, just this double person. check because usually the microphone's on the bottom of the phone. Just make sure there's nothing covering the mic or maybe interrupting okay. access to I it. it. Standing on the laptop, so maybe that's why. Okay. That might be, yeah. Um, can you just say that again? Because I missed like half of that. You're where do you live? Bradenton. Sorry, what state Florida. is that in? Florida. Florida, okay. And how old are you? 40. And you said you were married for 12 years? Mm hmm okay. Can I Can comment we... something? Mm hmm You don't okay. look like you're 40 years old. No. <laughs> I thought you were a good, like, 27. Yay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, married for 12 years, 40, Florida. Okay, and do you have any kids? Mm-hmm. Okay. Two. Two, two. two stepkids and two of my own. So four all day. Oh, okay. So he brought two kids to the relationship before you met him, mm -hmm. and then the two you had together, or they yep. were the ready. Okay, so two of your own two step kids. Okay, that's um, that's a bit of a situation, I guess, eh? Yeah, that's why we moved to Florida to be with them, and then now we're not together. So it's interesting. Do you do you share custody of the step kids too, or do you not see them? No, they're older. They're um, twenty and sixteen, so okay. they just float around. Okay, so they do their own thing. Yeah. All right. Well, Moff, what should we start with? Where do you want to, where do you want to begin? Well, I, I always love to hear about these situationships. We had a situationship last week. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there seems to be sort of, it actually seems like it's a similar definition. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd love to hear. So, well, just in case the definition is sort of not the same yeah, universally, let's, let's the what's the, what is the situationship, Luna? Um, I feel like I've been in situationships in the past and I would consider a situationship something that's going to last more than three months where at the three month mark, you're like not dating, you're seeing this person, but there's not really a title on it. I mm -hmm. wouldn't consider myself in a situationship right now because I believe it's going to lead into dating, but I wouldn't like, I don't want to say he's my boyfriend quite yet because it's a little too soon. So maybe I misunderstand the meaning of situationship because what I've always understood that to mean is that there's you're with somebody, but there's complications involved in it. Like maybe you're breaking up, getting back together or something like that. Yeah. I feel like the definition has definitely changed in the past few years. I feel like there's okay. always one person on the other side that's like so uncertain on like what they want to do. And then the other person is like so full in, like ready to date. 
And the other person is just like, I don't know what I want to do yet. And that person on the other hand is like so willing to spend time with you and to do anything they can to date you. But the other person is just kind of like stringing them along. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Maybe we, there's else out there. Just, or... just for the sake of clarity, can we define who the person is, guy or gal? I don't like the non non-binary terms. It makes it very confusing. Like for us, like. Yeah, yeah. So when you're talking about the person wants something and the other person doesn't want to give something, like, okay. who are we talking about? Is this the guy that doesn't want I, to Yeah, commit? I feel like it's mostly love with the guy. Like, the, mm -hmm. it's the guy who's not putting a label on it. Yeah. Okay. But still actively seeing you, and that's what creates a situation. Okay. So is he seeing other women right now? Personally, for me, no. But in my past situationships, I'm almost positive that they were also seeing other women. Okay, so you've been seeing him for three months. You dig his vibe. Things are going really well. You want to be a couple. You want to be his girlfriend, right? Yeah. Have you vocalized that to him? Have you overtly stated, hey, you know, like, where do we stand? I'd like to claim you. Yeah, I mean, in my past situationships that were three months, I think I was okay with us being called a situationship. But this most recent one is actually, it was, it's only been three weeks. Sorry to clarify. It's only been oh, three, three weeks. weeks. Okay. And I have had those conversations where I set my boundaries in the beginning so that I didn't end up in another three month situationship, uh, questioning what are we? Got it. So what kind of boundaries do you set? Like, how do you set up? A um, I think, being straightforward and having a conversation. I mean, it takes practice. It takes going to therapy. It takes talking to your friends openly about it and actually being emotionally available to have these conversations mm -hmm. um, compared to just floating and not asking questions. Mm. What would you need therapy for? Um, I think therapy is good to just become a, a more emotional human being and figure out how to set boundaries with people, not only in romantic relationships, but also relationships with your friends, relationships with your family members, et cetera. Um, I think it's just, it's good for everybody. It's good for everyone. Just a good, yeah, yeah, a good way to like learn how to set boundaries with people. And I think boundaries are what creates a relationship. What sort of areas do you find these guys are trying to push into that you need to set a boundary on? Um, I think boundaries that if I'm going to spend my time with you and give you my energy and my capacity that I need, um, something in return, such as a title or certain actions, like taking me on a date, um, telling his friends and family about me having active communication. I'm the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. I make it clear normally, like at least the very first week we meet, like I do not want a relationship. So like, that's the boundary I make. Yeah. Versus with someone else. Me, like, who wants a relationship. <laughs> I'm making relationship boundaries and she's on the other side. I'm just it. like, no, I just don't want a relationship right now. I'm too focused on my career and school. And like, I feel like that's the boundary I initially make. So, and what's your career? Um, I've been an EMT for three years now and I just finished my RN. Oh, good for you. Okay, so you're a nurse. Yes. That sounds familiar to you, Ali. Is that what you do? No, I, I always wanted to be a nurse. I'm like a fake nurse. I play one. Um, oh. <laughs> no, I'm in, I've done healthcare sales. So like, I always say I'm like dangerous enough to like, like I'm not a nurse, but I know enough to be dangerous. So um, I've worked with seniors in healthcare and sales and that, in mm -hmm. that home for like nine years. What's the, um, what's the vibe for you, Ali, when you hear that term situationship? Like, what does that mean to you? I don't know. It's also new to me, like this whole world of, I don't know. It's just weird because every guy that I ever even spent time with my whole entire life became my boyfriend. Right. If I slept with the guy, became my boyfriend. And then I dated him for four years. And then I dated the next one I slept with for seven. You know what I mean? It was this ongoing thing. And then oh, now all of a sudden I get out here and I'm like, I just figure everyone I talk to is going to want to be with me because I'm so great. And I come to find out everybody's an asshole. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, my dear. Preaching to the choir over here. <laughs> I had no idea how horrible people were and how full of crap they are. What sort of problems are you running into in the dating world, Ellie? Just, you know, lies, lots of lies and gaslighting and manipulation and that kind what of thing. What are some what are some examples that you've run into? Yeah. Were you being uh, misled? Of the... There was one that was really bad. He was like Give us a story. Lay it oh on thick. God. I, I was like <laughs> Make it juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I just I mean, you know, he claimed he had all this money. He grew up in a nice car. 
um, was always very strange about where he wanted to meet and how he wanted to meet and could never like be at a play, like meet me here, meet me there, drop everything, meet me here. I'm like, I can't do that. Um, you know, like I have to work. I can't just like go meet you at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, like 30 minutes away. Like it was just weird. And um, he was just very pushy and like overtly pushy with like sexual things. And it was just very, very strange. And finally I was like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Like this is, I don't know, you're just off. And come to find out, I didn't realize this because I didn't even know groups like this existed, but apparently this man has been posted all over multiple groups for years. <laughs> oh, I mean, I to <laughs> other women for years being pushy and, um, you know, getting mad at you if you can't just drop everything and meet him at 12 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday for lunch. Like, uh, just being overtly, like, sexual, send me this, send me that. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. It was very strange and finally when i was like i can't like this is not working for me i can't talk to you where did but you find the group that, like like what information did you find in the group and what was the group uh we're not supposed to talk about it oh, wait, oh it's like fight club it's these no it's it's these groups that pop up it's called like are we dating the same guy or are we dating the same man or something yeah like he's been all so over there's been they're all over these metro cities and mm-hmm. they share pictures and text messages and it's like yeah it's it's, it's, the, it's fight club it's- for women a fake it's a pot of tea, I'm like, basically. Yeah. There's pictures of, like, women in like, his penis bedroom. Like, <laughs> I, He's been giving a fake name to women for all these years. I found out his real name. Um, he is married, apparently. Maybe divorced. We're not really sure. Um, yeah. Hmm. Like, even his phone, because he had a green bubble when I first started texting him. I was like, mm, that's a red flag. You have a green bubble. He's like, why? I have an Android. I'm like, okay. And I just believed him. No, he was really one of those, like, fake numbers that come up as a green bubble. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, there you go, viewers. You know, it's you have green bubbles, it's it's a red flag. It's, it's, it's humans that lie, right? Android. It's a it's a red flag. Yeah. If it was a big number, if it was an Android, either way, it's a red flag. <laughs> exactly. Right. No, that's you know, that's interesting. I, I saw somewhere that's uh, that a woman said that she would dump a guy or not be interested in a guy if he didn't have an iPhone, if he had an Android. Is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah. It's like red flag. Yeah. I literally said that to him on the first time we started texting. He's like, why is that a red flag? Because I choose to have an Android. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm sorry. I won't be a bitch about it then. But what about but, Luna and Zoe? Like, what do you think like, about Androids? I think it's red flag. I think it's just a joke, really. Like, yeah, I, I, I think it's more of a me. I don't think it's that. Like, as okay. like yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It's not like I was really going to not talk to somebody because exactly. of it. I think it's just a joke that people, people say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Luna and Zoe, you guys said that you had some questions, some stuff that you were stuck on you wanted to throw out there? Questions? Should I should I bring up my situation? Fire and away. Questions on what they think? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Do it. Why not? Um, I met this guy. We really connected on multiple levels, like had a lot of commonalities. You Is know, this the I- same guy that's a situation ship or a different guy? It's yeah, not same situation. He, it's not like it's too soon to be named a situation. No, yeah. Okay. It's like okay, so three this is, weeks alone, right? This is it's Mr. Three, three Weeks. Okay. <laughs> yes, and they both feel situation like situation ship is if you don't have a title by three months. Okay. I feel like, yeah. And like one person's like, I really want some, like the female's like, I really want a relationship. And the guy's like, mm, let's just wait a little bit longer. Let's see how things go. And it's already yeah. been like a certain amount of months and you've met his family. You guys are basically in a relationship and yeah. there's still not do a you, title. What do you guys, how do you guys feel about introducing a girl to their family? Do you think that adds another level of like seriousness? Well, uh, now that's an interesting question because I mean, you're only, I mean, you barely know this guy for three weeks. Why would he introduce you to his family? Well, I, he doesn't live where I live. Okay. And I went to visit him. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't think I'm probably, I'm probably not going to visit that place for a long time because I'm mm-hmm. moving to Europe in February. So I think by me visiting him, it was like, it's like, I'm going to meet them now or never. I mean, uh, I mean, that's from a guy's perspective. It's a little bit of a rush unless he's needy, unless he's, uh, doesn't have any options, you know, sort of thing. Like most guys wouldn't want to introduce any gal to his family uh, within the first three weeks, let alone probably three months. There might be some guys that would do it. There might be, but I think generally speaking, they're like, yeah, I want to see what this chick's made of, right? Because guys that are at or near the top shelf 
have options they're in demand you know women want their attention so if they're going to introduce you to their family it's because there's something going on there and it's worth their while otherwise their family is going to be like well why do you keep bringing new checks to us every three weeks right yeah <laughs> yeah i agree so well, look, you said you're moving as you're moving across the pond and i mean this is going to be a long distance thing i mean what's the what's the play here yeah i mean i wasn't even looking for a relationship and i'm still like everywhere i haven't dated anyone in three years and everywhere i go i feel like <gasps> i've met anyone like i meet and go on dates with guys and like then i just i don't know i just don't feel like a specific way about them enough to date them and then this guy came along and i felt that way um, I do agree it is a little rush three weeks in to meet someone's parents, but in the opposing argument, I think that, you know, maybe he does think I'm worth his while and it was like a now or never because I'm moving to Europe and maybe it'll become a long distance thing. I mean, in, at the point I'm at in my life with my career, I can't have someone mm -hmm. who's accumulating my time and energy all the time. So having someone who like can still give me that emotional support, but not always be in my space is kind of a positive thing. So you want to um, I want to come back to that. Hold on. I want to come back to that. I have a question before that. What's, <laughs> what's the age range that you're typically dating in? And then what's the age of this guy? Um, typically I probably date from like 21 to 26. I think 27 is kind of pushing it with the age range because I feel like, you know, at that point, like you're really not in the same place in life at all. Um, but this guy's 25. He just turned 25. Sure. So we have a four year age gap. And then there's me. I date anywhere from like 20, like 24 to like 30. She's my support system when I'm like, is this guy too old? And she's like, no. no I would I'm do like, that. I definitely would. I'm like, I think five But you could see how. You could see how like a long distance relationship is problematic for for a guy, right? I mean, you're you're basically describing a situation where you get to rely on him for emotional support, talking on the phone and FaceTime and things like that, which is great. That's what women are looking for in relationships. You know, they like safety, they like they like um, you know, support, they like to have that emotional connection. But for guys are wired to be far more physical. We want the hugs and the intimacy and the kisses and the bedroom fun and all that kind of good stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's a tough sell for a lot of guys, any sort of long, the, the types of guys that I've found that will subject themselves to long distance relationships are always guys that don't have better options at home. The same kind of guys that I think Rich is alluding to that have said, you know, a guy that's in a rush to introduce somebody he met three weeks ago to his family, either there, there's two possibilities here, right? Either, what you're selling is so damn good that he just has to run and introduce you and tell him or can we be like or, can we can we agree on that one can we just be or, agree on that? i don't know i i maybe we should pull the audience rich i mean are the goods that good or is it more likely this guy doesn't have options or he doesn't have other folks out there that he's entertaining and talking to and Mm -hmm. he's trying to kind of capitalize and, and lock you down. Cause, cause generally guys that are in a rush to lock women down do so because they have a lack of options. It's not generally because I what she's got is so great that he but, just has to have it. And I do feel like that sits in the back yeah. thing where you're like, you're like so in love and that beginning, like newness thing that like both people feel sometimes. Wait, what else did you say before that? I think you like, cut out. Like the newness part, you know, like that sometimes there's that like new factor where like you both think you're so like in love with each other right from like day. Honeymoon phase. I'm like invisible string. Like it makes sense. <laughs> um, you, don't have to answer, you don't have to answer this question, but I'm curious. You can just decline to answer if you like, but I'm curious if you all have had intimate times in those three weeks. Me and him? Yes. Yes. Um, Luna, you said you're going to Europe. What's the plan there? You said you're moving there. Yeah. So I graduate in t this weekend from college and I'm actually teaching, um, English in Europe for six months. Okay. So I'm doing my teaching certification in Prague and then I'm going to live there for six months until my next move. You're going to forget all about this dude while you're in Prague. That's, that's what I'm be, saying. That could be a possibility. Okay. That's this could always saying. be a possibility. What was that? hundred percent. Okay, That's and I and I have gone abroad before, and you know a similar thing happened, but 
I think right now in this stage of my life where I am moving, it's not like I'm going to find anyone here to like hang out with. So like so right now. If this guy, if, you know, like if this dude, Mr. Situationship, Mr. Three Weeks proves to be like, Mr. Top Shelf, uh, like a 1% man, he, you know, he ticks off all the boxes for you. Would you, she's still there, good. Would you uh, postpone, delay, uh, reconfigure your life for him so that you don't move to Prague? No, that was not, yeah. I, there's like, there's three things I want to get done in the next, you know, four years. And I don't think I would ever change my life route for him. So okay, what are the three things? Do the teaching English. I was looking yeah. at doing the Peace Corps and then getting my master's. So, you know, those are things I have to still figure out if I can have someone in the equation who lives in a different state than me and has also a different life plan. Mm. Um, Zoe, you said something earlier on about uh, not wanting a relationship. You're focused on your career or your school right now, or is it a combination of both? Correct. I just, yeah, I just finished my RN and I'm doing my transfer to the IC right now. I've been in the ER for three years now. Mm -hmm. And I think my thing is I really did not like something serious because as soon as I get home from school, like I'm studying hours out of my day. And I did originally try to have a relationship a couple years ago, like throughout my nursing. And it was just so hard because they were making plans on the weekends, getting frustrated that I wasn't able to, you know, spend time with them. And it was just, it caused a lot of fights and arguments and it was just too much stress like my first semester and i was just like i really cannot do this and i was together with him for five years so mm -hmm. it was extremely hard that was like one of the hardest things i've had to do okay um ali i want to ask you this question then because we got two 21 year olds here that are prioritizing career school uh you know jobs all that um you're 19 years older how does that like resonate with you like do you have any thoughts on that um, well, my hardest thing with dating has been how I have my kids half the time. So again, people just want to do these spontaneous plans like, oh, can you take the day off today and, and go here to Tampa and like go to lunch? I'm like, no, like I have to work, I have appointments. Yeah. I, I make my own schedule so I can sometimes do things like that. But, and then like I have my children half the time, so I'm not going to sacrifice time with them to go on a date with a random person. I'm not going to like get a babysitter unless they're paying for it. Mm -hmm. so, date so the the um the question that i was more or less driving to is maybe i should stay a little more clear what do you think about prioritizing um career job degrees over a relationship children and family um no i'm more like old-fashioned and mm -hmm. you no know, like i would have been a stay-at-home mom with no job and just look cute all the time and gone to the gym get my nails done and done all that <laughs> i can marry somebody Girl. rich Yes. We're working towards that. Yes, We're I working towards that. Like, <laughs> but you're not, though. Hold on. But you're not. Let's catch that real quick. No, cause... I'm going to. I want to be like a stay at home mom with like a PhD. You know what I mean? Like, but, uh, I want, how, I want how do those two things reconcile themselves? I know. Because those are, those are probably complete. Those are opposite sides of that spectrum. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, I got a bachelor's degree and I was like, that's all I need. I'm done. I don't want to ever go to school ever again. <laughs> and I was done. I grew up with a single mom, so I kind of have a different perspective on prioritizing career. Um, just seeing my mom struggle financially growing mm -hmm. up, I just wanted that stability and yeah. that career that I could always lean back on. And if I do happen to find somebody that, you know, that could make me stay at home, of course, like maybe down the line, I would love to have kids and be able to do that. But right now, I just feel like that career was just so important. Like you have an awesome career that you can go anywhere in the country. So that's And awesome. do travel nursing, exactly. And I Big bank do travel nursing. But I think Mm -hmm. But what what I think a lot of times women don't understand when they talk about these kinds of things and what sometimes and I think a lot of people aren't honest with them and they have these conversations is that the higher you climb on the socioeconomic scale, the higher your degree. It's if there's an inverse relationship between the number of men that you're going to want to be attracted that you're going to be attracted to and that are going to be at your standards, the higher you climb It's the absolute it's, it's the inverse for men, the higher men, the more men, money men make. Better educated they are, um, you know, higher they're climbing on the socioeconomic plate, their yeah. options expand. But for women, because of the way women generally date across and mostly up, that pool will get ever smaller. So, I mean, if you're a PhD making 250K plus 500K a year, you're going to want at least somebody. And we hear this a lot, right? I want somebody on my level. Well, the higher your level goes, the higher that a guy is going to have to be on that level. 
And so your options and yeah. the guy you want is going to be ever, ever, ever smaller. Usually when women say on on my level, what they mean is above my level. So if that you're is. in nursing making six figures, mm -hmm. you're or you're going to go for a doctor that's making more than that or somebody in a equivalent mm -hmm. or higher status type yeah. of career, right? I'm not going to lie that I've noticed that this past year. No, sure. yeah, <laughs> me too. I think, yeah. you know, and that's why when like we, I meet a guy that I do consider someone who's like on the same scale as me, I like grab onto them because mm -hmm. Even finding the bare minimum, like good manners, um, knows how to take you on a date, knows how to communicate with you effectively is like as hard as it is. Mm -hmm. And then trying to find someone who also has a good career and has a good head on their shoulders. It's just like, so I can only imagine that it gets worse and worse. And I feel like every year these men get, you know, they find a girlfriend and mm -hmm. they got, they get married, you know what I mean? So the dating pool just gets smaller and smaller for us. Um, I only dated one man this past year and it w it did not go very well for me, but it, I just feel like with what you were saying, I really don't find many options for me yeah. right now, like mm -hmm. where I live and it does get smaller and smaller. And I, I feel like the standards definitely trims down your options. What, what's, um, what happened with the guy that you dated that didn't go so well? Um, actually, believe it or not, I met him on a dating website called hinge. I don't know if you, anyone's familiar with that. It was very okay so yeah, it's, very it's, it's, not even from here um we dated for like a couple months you know talking here and there and we were out, going out a couple times and once i started nursing back up i was like because this is during the summer this is when i was dating him during the summer when i wasn't in school and i had that time off and i was just working full time in the er um i said you know like when i start school again like i want to cut things off but in this time frame when we were hanging out like i really actually like this man and that has not happened for me and i could not tell you how long like how long it was forever mm -hmm. and um how old was he zoe and what did he do for a living so he previously worked for the u.s senate and he did like congress work and he was in law school like around this area mm -hmm. and um and his age he was 24. okay so very successful for 24. I agree. And I feel like he had a really good head on his shoulders. You know, he kind of had like the things I was looking for in a man. He was extremely sweet. And I think we just got along so well, like we clicked initially. And I've never even gone on a hinge date before, or, you know, let alone gone on with a man recently. So I was like, wow, like this is, you know, this is, that was pretty good. Like, I'm going to reach out to him again and see like, if we could, you know, talk again and see where like, where our, both our heads are at. And he's like, I have family coming in town. I would love for you to come down and meet them. I'm like, that's wonderful. In that week, we actually ran into each other at a bar. And this was like a couple months after like we ended kind of things. And he pretended like. Oh, we lost the video. She's going to come back. The story was getting interesting. I know. Oh. <laughs> just reaching the crescendo. Something. He better not have pretended he didn't know her. I'm I'm guessing he was there with another gal, but yeah, we'll so see what so happens so. if if she if she comes back. Right, Man, we gotta. Let them I don't know if we gotta hard hardwire the these these mobile devices or what the situation is. <laughs> um. All right. Well, while we're waiting for Luna and Zoe to fix that up. Oh, oh wait. No, they left and they came back. Well, hopefully, they can click through. See if you can get them in. Yeah, it'll be all right. Um, come back. Allie, so you're recently single, 12 years married. So aside from Mr. Uh, oh, hang on a sec. Did they come back in? I'll, I'll bring it back in when they got it all situated. They're still okay. figuring it out. We'll let them get that squared away. Um, yeah, what else has been going on for you, um, you know, in the dating world now that you're single? Single mom with kids, dating, 40. What's yeah. happening with you? Things. See, I'm the opposite of them. I've been dating the younger ones. You're dating younger guys? <laughs> like 24 to like 32. A okay. cougar. I like the younger ones, except okay, so like, but now I'm kind of over it now because I'm like, eh. So yeah, that's interesting because you talked about guys that are not you're you're not you know making wanting you to drop things or you know what's the reason behind dating younger? They're hot. <laughs> it's all sexual, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. But I'm kind of getting over it. Like I think I got that on my system a little bit. Mm -hmm. and now I'm just trying to like chill a little bit because they're all annoying. So they're great when the intimacy happens, but when you're not doing that, then they're annoying and irritating and not fun to be around. 
Yes. What's the That's deal with the guys out. your age? I don't know. I haven't really been out with that many. They can't keep up or what's the situation there? I haven't really been out with that many that are my age, honestly. Okay. You don't find them attractive? I do. I mean, mm -hmm. my husband is four years older than me, three years older than me. Okay. Um, I've always dated guys older than me my whole life. This yeah. is the first I've ever dated guys younger. Okay. Um, so it's a novelty that you're sort of working through to see what it's all about. Party over it, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Close to being over it. Yeah. Um, Zoe, you were telling us an interesting story before you cut out there. It was kind of <laughs> peaking. I, okay. So, like, what, what was like the last thing that you heard? You saw him at the bar. You ran into him at the bar. Okay. So, that same week that he like was texting me all week, like wanting to meet up, we ran into him at the bar. Like, this was around Halloween time. And he was with like his friends from like law school. And, um, he acted like he had no idea who I was. And I think he got caught with another girl, you know, like he was with another girl and I think he was dating another girl. So that was, that was the end of that story. And five days later, I got blocked on everything that same weekend he wanted me to meet some of his family coming in town. So that was like, that was like, I had no idea like what happened. Like I did not do anything wrong. I said hello to him, gave him a hug. It was a very short interruption and I got like the most, oh my gosh, look that I've ever had in my entire life. I was like, oh my gosh, that was so bad. I get home that same night and he tries to Snapchat me and I'm like, why would I want to talk to somebody that completely ignored me at a bar? Like didn't even want to catch up. We haven't talked for months since like the previous time we were going out during the summer. And I was, I left it on open. Five days later, I get blocked on everything. So. That was the end of that story, and I have not dated anyone since. So was there a gal there with him that night? Um, yes. I mean, but I didn't think anything of it, mm -hmm. truthfully. Like, I was just like, you know, like, why would he be reaching out to me, making plans to me that same weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. What do you think so of that? Like, that went. <laughs> what do you think of a guy that's at that level, that's in law school, deals with Congress, politicians, sort of stuff? I'm assuming he's a good-looking guy. Very. And that, yeah. like, that another hard thing that I can't really find anyone that I'm attracted to. And he was like one of the first guys that I was generally attracted to. Okay. So, like so he's ticking off a lot of boxes for you. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you understand there's going to be more than just Zoe competing for his attention, right? Cause he's a oh, high value person. guy. So mm -hmm. what's, what's the issue with pursuing a guy like that? If, if, you know, you dig his vibe to that level, you know, like he's, he's the only guy that you found that attractive in the span of time that you've been dating. Right. So what if you see another gal, like they're not exclusive, right? Like he's talking about it, inviting you to see his family. Exactly. Um, I knew in the back of my head, I was like, there's no way that, you know, I met him and I, you know, was like, wow, like this guy's great. That other woman wasn't think like, we're not thinking the same exact yeah. thing. I, so I had that so he night. messaged you that night on Snapchat and you didn't read it. You didn't acknowledge it. Nothing. Yeah. Like we were texting that day. Right. The day that we, you know, ran. Into so why would he message you on Snapchat text. instead of texting you then? Exactly. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Didn't like what is the, me, they don't do text anymore. They just only Snapchat these young people. But yeah. I, you're going to have to forgive me Snapchat maybe for being a little Snapchat. bit thick and disconnected yeah. from Snapchat. They don't even yeah, the the that appeal app, so. is rich. The appeal is that the messages disappear. Okay. So it's open. like a, so it's, it's like setting like, signal messages to disappear after five minutes or something like that. Pretty much. Or they yeah. open, they, they disappear as soon as they're opened, unless you screenshot it or something like that. Got it. Got it. See if they screenshot it, so then they can be like, why are you screenshot? Yeah. And keep in so, mind, like, we never really Snapchatted before. Like, this was, like, an, okay. out of the blue, like, just Snapchatting me and, like, letting me know that he got home. I don't, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like he did something a little bit goofy on, on his end, but I still kind of want to press you on this question a little bit more. So, high-value mm -hmm. guy, you find him attractive. You don't find that in other guys you're dealing with. He's dealing with other women, obviously. So, now you know this. You know, he's in, he's in demand. He sends you a message. You dig his vibe, but you ignore it. And then you get blocked several days later. <laughs> Are you yes. surprised? Ignored it. Um, I was kind of shocked because I, I ignored it. Okay, yeah. but I kind of was thinking inside my head, like, what did I do wrong? Like, what made me get blocked? Because I've never been blocked by a man before. Like, this is all. The only thing that you did wrong was that you didn't respond to him. Mm -hmm. Right. And because say, he... like, what was up about the, you know tonight? But like, that's not my place to be like. And I didn't no, no. But you know what the message was? Like, were you able to read it in advance, or you can only read it if you open it? It was a picture of him sitting in bed at 2.30 in the morning. 
did it have a <laughs> caption or something or oh, just blank just a picture nice. of him laying in bed yep that's it so 24 year old guys <laughs> an a immature and goofy is it yeah it's an invitation more than anything but it's like see for for the gals watching and for you zoe like the amount of guys that are going to tick off all these boxes for you gals that that you have a strong attraction for that you have a a lust for even they're they're rare and a lot of women compete for them and the thing is is that high value successful guys like that are not common on the sexual marketplace beautiful women are everywhere right i, I mean if you yeah. go to instagram and you do a search uh -huh. on hashtag fitness girl millions of results will pop up objectively with nines and tens some of them 11s you know in some cases Absolutely. like really hot women so there's so there's loads and loads of really hot women out there but the kind of guy that you're looking for that 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 really draws you in and captivates your heart is pretty rare so i would encourage you in the future it, you know if you find a guy like that not mm -hmm. to take it easy on him and to you know just not follow through on something because like women will be competing for his attention like there's no and question I about that I really didn't think twice about it, honestly. And yeah, like it would so remind me why you guys stopped seeing each other, like why you wanted to end things. You're like going back to school or something like just, that, or what I was, was just it? going back to school, and I just I really don't like talking to people like when I'm in school. But then, like when I was alone for a couple of weeks, I was like, wait, I generally enjoyed his company. Like this was different than I'm, you know, I'm used to. And I was like, wait, did I just screw up? Like, did I mess up? Like, not continuing to pursue him? Like a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that was that was. Yeah, but the blocking is so immature that he just lost a lot of points with that. That's yeah, but if he's got lots of options, girl. he's got so many. Options. Are you kidding me? He lives in Naples. If like, he's got lots of options and a girl blocks him, he's just gonna be like, eh, whatever. I'll just go to the next he one. He doesn't need to block her. That's that's just I've immature. never been blocked before. So like that was new. No, it's like it's so <laughs> Have you ever dated a guy of that caliber? No. There you go. Um, I I mean, I previously talked to someone that you know, worked for American Airlines, but mm -hmm. I just, I wasn't really attracted to him as much. Yeah. He was a pilot, but I just didn't have that attraction. But this man had the same exact, you know, really good career, but he was attractive. So like, that was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, like, you're going to have to, um, you know, the thing is, is that women have been told this story over and over again, know your worth girl, don't put up with <laughs> this that and the other thing i see this on social media all the time like women telling other women um you know if he takes you on these places for dates and you have to disqualify him if he does this disqualify right. me if he has an android disqualify him it's like they routinely try to find ways for for women to convince other women to be miserable and single by disqualifying men for reasons that are just simple like oh he sent me or you know he did acknowledge me enough at the bar when he was out there with his friends and probably another gal yeah. which is reasonable right because he's out there with them and her probably but a, a little bit of a a chase from you zoe might have got his attention on it right and originally that's how we started like yeah. i wasn't paying attention to him he you know oh sorry i can't like hang out this weekend you know he'd have to wait a couple weeks or yeah you know it's just stuff like that and i didn't think twice about it because i was still like doing my own thing during the summer hanging out with my friends so it wasn't like a constant like I'm available to him. And I think initially that's what attracted him to me. Mm -hmm. And I was constantly working. And um, during school, that obviously changed. And I was like, I would do anything to hang out with this man now. Mm -hmm. How long did you date yeah. him for? It was just only a couple months during the summer. A couple of months. Okay, it so was really, short. really, it, I didn't really think anything of it, truthfully. Okay. All right. Um, you were. You were talking about the career pursuit, um, not wanting to be serious with a guy. Um, a nurse makes what, like about 100000 100, Depending on where Florida? you live. Uh, okay. Usually, like new, like new grads make anywhere from like eighty to ninety, just depending on where you live. And over time as well, you can make your six figures. Definitely, yeah. we only work three days. You pick up one to two extra shifts, you're making six figures. Okay, so let me ask you this question: If you had the option of life A, which is on the path that you're on right now, you're gonna uh -huh. make 100, 150 thousand dollars a year. You work three days a week. The rest of the time, you're free to travel, take photographs, you know, do all the cool stuff that you like to do. Share, uh -huh. you know, share your life on social media. Or path B is um, finding a guy that you find equally as attractive, maybe even more, who's yeah. uh, wealthy. And I'm not talking about you know making the same amount of money as you. I'm talking about making a lot more money than you. 
Can uh, I say is, B now? Pardon me? Can I say B, option B now? <laughs> I, I haven't finished even telling you what option that's B is fine. to completion, but option B is that. Like, you just want a guy that's good looking that makes a lot more money, right? Yes. And then um, he can just I'm retire saying, you. Like, you can stay home. More money. I'm just so, saying this. Would you would you want to be retired and stay home and have babies, or would you want to continue on with your career? I'd still want to work. Till what age? Until I retire with a good retirement funding. Okay, so you wouldn't want to have kids then? I do want to have kids. Well, how are you going to balance a guy, a career, children, family? So in so I have to get my ICU critical care hours done, and that's going mm -hmm. to take at least one year. And I can apply to anesthesiology schools um in about a year after those hours are complete with that schedule they have so much time off and mm -hmm. i feel like i will be able to balance with being an anesthesiologist it is a very rigorous career don't get me wrong but there's a lot of time with the hospital that they give you time off when you are pregnant and i feel like they they can balance your family life there's so many doctors that i know that have multiple yeah. kids and they have so like months of vacation time paid like mm -hmm. I think it's just a good option to make sure. Okay. No. You mean doctors? We're talking about men, though, right? We're talking about MD. men having, yeah, which yeah. which are generally men, right? So I mean, they're generally men are not the ones that are staying home taking care of children. You know, you don't really have stay at home dads. No, no, no. I have a lot of mom. ER nurses, like not nurses, ER doctors that are beautiful women that have kids and they bring them into the ER, like ER all the time. And I I still think that they are, have a really good balance with, the, you know, with their life. It can be done. What sort of what sort yeah. of complaints do you hear from these older women that have beautiful children in ER? Like, what are they? What are their lives like? Like, what do you hear about them? I really don't hear any complaints. Everything's perfect for. I them. hear them going out boating every weekend with their husband and their kids on the weekend, and I'm like, I want that, you know. Okay. And their and their husbands do what? Like, are they medical professionals as well? Yeah, there was one doctor that I work with. They both work, you know, they're both doctors, and okay. I don't know what the other husband does, but I you, know. So on, on option B, I described hot dude, and then I got to wealthy and successful, and you stopped me there, and you're like, just give me option B. Why did you stop there? Like, why does he just have to be hot and successful, hot and rich? It's not even that he has to have money, honestly. Um, I but you feel stopped like me on B when I got to money. Attractive. That's where I'm going to stop you at, because I have- No, they're both equally attractive. I'm just saying, like, B is more successful and has a lot more money. Okay, well, my thing is I have a hard time finding someone that I'm attracted to. I feel like I get the so-called ick so quickly with a man mm. that I just, I initially just can't pursue a full-on relationship with him. What it's about? More of like a friendship. What about a guy creates the ick for you? Like what are ick items? Oh, man. Allie, come on. You have to know about this. Everything. Dirty. <laughs> Everything. So I don't okay. even know how to describe like there's certain things that they say. Certain, yeah. <laughs> but like there's certain men where like give me I, like the top three most prolific that you see that just bug the hell out of you. Or let's let's talk about it this way. Like what are the what are the things that men are doing wrong today? Like what are the biggest gaps that men have when it comes to dating that you're seeing from your experience? Like, what are men not getting? Um, maybe social media has a huge impact on relationships nowadays and how oh. that um what do you mean? them mostly following all females and their entire feed is, you know, half naked women and, you know, their Snapchat is full of girls. That's just, I feel like that's just our generation nowadays is social media. Yeah. So because what's using... inherently wrong with yeah. that, like, what's inherently... uncalibrated about that? Um, maybe because there's just always is it that, that they're giving them. other women attention? Is it that they are like not exclusive to you? I... Like, so like, no, what, what about social media makes them undesirable? I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. See, I'm old, so I don't even check. Like, I don't look at who they're following. I don't even have time to follow them. Like, I don't mm -hmm. do any of that. My problem is kind of the opposite. I think everybody's hot. <laughs> like, I'm like a man. Like, I'm like, ooh, I'm like checking out dudes that are walking by. Mm -mm. I have the problem with thinking people are attractive. Like, I find too many men attractive. So, so so a guy that follows too many women, and it's not just women, I'm assuming it's beautiful women, right? Yeah, why would they follow ugly ones? And their feed has a lot of women in it. Mm -hmm. But these are good looking guys that you're attracted to. Like, are you surprised that they have no, women that they're interested in that not aren't you? Not so, at all. So why would that turn you off? Like, why is that an ick for you? I feel 
like it would turn me off if we're, we've been, you know, dating for a long time. Not necessarily okay. in the beginning. If it's in the beginning, that's not necessarily in the egg. I'm just saying, like, okay. maybe down the line, further down the line, and it's a continue like, issue. And does well, that make sense? Following is it, it's not like real people. It's like Instagram models. It's like those people. It's not like it's Are we talking about influencer type of accounts? Yeah, like influencers. It's not like they're following like a million girls they know, right? It's mostly just like, they, yeah, they're not really friends. They don't yeah. like they don't really know them personally. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. Well, what we're trying to drill down here is this. So, I mean, we're not talking about like six months down the line, a year down the line. You're saying that it's really difficult for you to find a guy to be as be attracted to or have a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. But that's happening early on, right? Okay. So what what are some of those things that's preventing you from getting past that two date, one date, three date mark? You know that that's what we're trying to drill down. I, at. What are guys not getting? No. Like what's what's giving you these turnoffs about these guys? I really do know, like on the first date, if I want to continue seeing this person, and it's literally because if I get the ick or not. Let me ask you this question: and, Hot, hot dude, lawyer, school guy, Congress guy, the super attractive guy. Did he follow other women on Instagram? Yeah, thousands. Okay, so it's not that they follow women on on Instagram; it's that. The guy that you're attracted to, it doesn't matter if he's following other women on Instagram. The guys that you're not attracted to, it's a turnoff because you're not attracted to them anyway. So it's just more of a turnoff is what you're saying, right? I guess, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it does sit in your back of your head. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Do I really initially care about it? No, maybe down the line. But yeah, it is. If I see that and I'm like, mm, probably not yeah. the best idea to get involved in. But okay. <laughs> I love trouble, so... Mm. But every dude doesn't. Every single dude that's scrolling through their shit has chicks, chicks, chicks. That's all it is. I mean, it's not like you're going to find anybody that doesn't have that. I mean, yeah, honestly, no. In this generation, yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't follow women on my social media. And I'm just not interested. I do love part of this. Yeah, Moff does that. Moff's that's a part of this. It's a very important part of his job. He, you know, he has to make concessions in his life and follow beautiful women so he can set them up for the show. It's a burden. It's a burden. <laughs> difficult. <laughs> He has a difficult life. I um, do it for you, Rich. Let me get these you. super chats real quick before we move on. Yeah, go ahead. Throw them up. So, Christian and Plug, thanks for the chat. $10. Uh, so, why would a top shelf guy want to be saddled with a woman that doesn't compliment him but is interested in career? Will their real mother be a daycare worker? I'm not sure about that second question. Will their real mother be a day? So, that's basically putting your kid in daycare so you can go back to work. Mm -hmm. One of the things that oh, you were God. talking Someone about earlier, Zoe, interest. I said, so you're looking for a cheerleader and we kind of breezed over it real, real quick. So, I think that's what he's talking about there, right? Like, okay. I don't really. It might have been Luna. I think that was Luna because the guy, she was moving yeah. overseas. Is she coming oh, okay. back, by the way, or is she done? She had she to. Yeah, we're actually okay. hosting a party tonight. So, she had to go and let some people okay. in. Yeah. So, so, this guy's question is you know, why would a guy want to deal with a woman that doesn't compliment his life? You still there? Still yeah, there, no, right? I am. Sorry yeah. about that. So, why would a guy, like a very successful guy, makes good money, want to invite a woman into his life that isn't a compliment to his life, that adds some value to it? Because I think that one of the areas that women miss today, um, which is a massive disservice, is that if you want to keep a good guy around, ladies, all you have to do is be really useful to his life. I agree. And that's where I struggle with, too, like trying to find a man that compliments my life as well, not just because. Right. But if, he's, but if he's successful, he is a compliment to your life. So the, the notion that there's differences between men and women is sometimes very, very hard for, you know, women to grasp, especially, you know, when they've been out there getting brainwashed by cultural narratives for, you know, their entire life. But women are beauty objects to men. There's no guy that will ever look at your degree on the wall and be like, you know, Moff, look at that degree on the wall, man. That's hot. <laughs> we just don't care. But if you walk away and things are shaking nicely, we're going to be like... It's a nice ass. I'd wear that as a hat. That's how guys think, right? So we look yeah. at women as beauty objects. We don't look at them as success objects. We don't care about their career. Men know that that women don't share their pot of gold with men. So mm -hmm. we're more interested in what value does she add to my life? Like for me, I don't have culinary skills, but I love to eat. So one of the things that turns me on is a woman that knows how to cook, right? So for other guys, it could be something else, right? He may want children. So he wants somebody with you know, mothering skills, right? Like those types of qualities that would become obvious and exist to him. Um, but guys won't find, generally speaking, guys. So, sorry, let me just rephrase that. The kinds of guys that you're going to be attracted to, 
that you're going to have a strong draw to, that you're going to lust after, those kinds of guys, um, they're not going to be interested in, oh, yeah, I want to be a cheerleader for you too, right? Like they don't want to support you through school, get, go get your degrees, go make, you know, uh, $160,000 a year doing, you know, whatever it is that you are going to uh -huh. do. It's not that important to them because if they're making half a million dollars or a million dollars, you're doing what they're doing. It's just going to be like, babe, just stay home. Let me take care of you. Raise my children. Make my house a home. You know, go get your nails done. Here's an allowance. Here's a car. You know, make sure the kids are safe. Pick them up and take but them you know, to and from places. You're saying they'd rather have someone that has like those certain traits than someone with a successful career necessarily? Or? That's confusing to you, isn't it? No, not not really. I feel like the successful ones, yes. I get what you're saying with that. But then mm -hmm. there's the ones that are, you know, not making that much money that would love to have their, you know, person that's making a lot Absolutely. of money. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> if you find a guy that's making seventy thousand dollars a year, he's gonna love the notion that you're a nurse making a hundred, hundred and sixty thousand dollars yes, a year. And I've noticed that and I'm like mm -hmm. what you know, that's another he's, egg. That's the egg. <laughs> he's gonna be the guy that's you know, it's gonna be like, Yeah, let's go out for a date. Let me get dinner this time. You get it next time. Or let me get dinner and you get the movie sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's take your car. Let's, you know, let's drive your car, you know, for the weekend. Yep. They're more of the egalitarian, equalist sort of, you know, modern day, you know, progressive, like male feminist type of dude. Yeah. I don't right? think that's... Nope. So most of these guys are basically like beta males. And yeah. that's, the, that's the vast majority of the dating pool that you're going to meet, meet out there. And then there's a cream that just sort of rises to the top that that all most women are going to want to demand their attention and their time and want to get their commitment on. So all the beautiful men out there are competing for these top shelf men and all these average guys out there that are like, let's split the bill or let's go Dutch or let's, you know, buy a house together sort of thing versus a guy making, yeah. you know, a lot more money saying, I already have a house, you know, move in and let's have kids, you know, sort of thing. Well, we lost her again connections it's that party it's that damn party anyway i'm sure she'll make it back if not it's all right yeah, we'll get it back Allie. yes sir what's going on not much how does how does the notion of these um sort of softer beta guys sort of you know deal with you i think you were nodding when we were talking about that disgusting i don't why are they why are they generally disgusting to you? I just don't know. If you're not like manly, if you can't like fix something, if you're not going to pay for like, I don't pay for shit. I'm not paying for one thing. Mm -hmm. Not splitting a damn bill. No. Mm -mm. What not. happens if you get a guy, you know, it's on the go. He's, you know, he's interesting. He's attractive. You know, he's got a job sort of thing, but he wants to split the bill or he wants you to pay next time or something like that. Is that like a no-go zone? I would say, oh, I thought this was a day. I saw this on, on Instagram the other day. Okay. That me i'm gonna say oh i'm sorry i thought this was a date you just want to be friends oh my gosh my bad here's my card right let's split it right gotcha yeah that's that's yeah. kind of a clever way to respond to that to set the tone isn't it i don't know i don't what about the younger guys that are treating you treating you like a milk like how do you deal with the money situation I've, of those I've, dates i've had some weird messages from guys like oh hey i need a hot sugar mom and i'm like mm, no i'm trying to find a sugar daddy so sorry you found the wrong one mm. but um no, the young ones are actually been surprisingly like whip their card out, pay for everything. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that, but I it's not like I'm bringing my card out. So gotcha, gotcha. What other struggles do you deal with? Because you were talking about dicks earlier too. So what do you get that uh, turns you off? Um, I guess like what she was saying, like manners. You know, I most of life in the south, so. Um, I like like a Southern personality, you know, Florida's not the South. I'm talking about the real South, um, you know, like that kind of thing. Like a man's going to open the car door. Mm -hmm. um, yes, ma'am. No, sir. Um, just polite. Always going to bring the, put the car down, like never even a thought to not. Um, so just, I don't know, like the beta, the beta thing is so unattractive to me. So, so the high value alpha guys that you also find, you know, attraction to how many of them have you dated? Have you, have you met many of them or? Um, some have been not so much. Um, but I'd say most of them. Yeah. Are my ex is the typical, you know, Tennessee, South Carolina tattoos, motorcycle riding. Yeah. Open, he opened my car door for 12 years. You know? Okay. Well, he um, sounds like an awesome guy. What happened to the marriage? Why did it end? It was my fault. <laughs> I, 
I had an affair. Oh no. Yeah. So he drew a line in the sand. So if he was such a good guy, why did you step out on him? Hold on. Hold on a okay. Um, I don't know. Did you get bored? Yes. Why did you get bored if he's doing everything you want? Opening the car door, he's got the tattoos, he rides a motorcycle, he's successful, he's a southern guy. I don't know. Midlife crisis. That's what my friends say. Right. Was it worth it? Probably not. Do you wish that you were back with him? Well, he still wants me to, and I'm not. I'm just not. I'm just still not there. I'm just not. But I know I'm going to regret it. I know it's going to like hit me like a ton of bricks, and I'm going to regret it. Wait, what happened on. to the you? You stepped out on him, and he wants to reconcile, and you and you don't. He would do anything for me to be back. No, I don't. So you guys have kids together, though. To be with him, but I just don't want to be with him. I don't know why. It just like I just like fell out of love like completely. And what happened to the guy that you had the affair with? Um. That didn't really work either. Because, I mean, like, you must have thought that, that it was going to go somewhere. Like, you were, were hoping that it was going to go somewhere, but it just didn't. So, yeah. Was he married? Did he just end it? Like, what happened? Yeah. Or younger, I just, once it was not um, forbidden anymore, thought I kind of think it was hotter when it was forbidden. Okay. So, you wanted some excitement, the thrill. So you were bored, it sounds like, in your marriage and your relationship. <laughs> All my friends are like, midlife crisis. I'm like, oh. Did you, like, why did you do it if you thought, like, I'm guessing you thought that he was going to be upset, right? Like, you didn't have an open relationship. It was it was unknown to him. It was a surprise. Correct. How did he find out? I finally just told him I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, I, I was getting real sloppy. Uh -huh. I just got to the point where I was like, like we had our location, you know, we shared locations and I would just turn it off. <laughs> and you'd be like, right. why is it off? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm out. I can't turn it back on. I don't know how. Bye. Like. Right. I was just getting real sloppy and bad. Yeah. What would you do different if you could go back in a time machine? I couldn't tell you because I don't know if I can make myself feel that way about him anymore. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why. There's nothing. <laughs> wrong with him he's like perfect attractive everything okay so let me ask you this question because there's this notion notion that i talk about in my book called betatization through a thousand concessions and for those people that have read my book and know what i'm talking about if you know you know if you don't let me take a moment to explain um women will betatize men women will betatize all men in a long-term relationship or a marriage it's it's not a question of if it's to the extent of how much right so the guys so it looks something like this hey honey you know don't brush your teeth over there you're gonna get toothpaste on the carpet honey mm -hmm. um you know put the white socks in the white hamper and the dark socks in the dark hamper honey let's go vegan together honey let's do this da, 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 da. and it's like the guy goes through this process of making concessions one after the other with a stamp i don't know if you ever watch any stand-up comedy but there's a routine that uh i think it's chris rock does and he's like just say yes 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 and he just stamps everything yes right as you, as you go through this process as a guy just agreeing to everything and not able to say no to her, she starts to lose attraction to you, right? Because he becomes a yes man. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what it is. He became so like engulfed in me. So he did exactly what he was told to do. He took vows mm -hmm. and sickness and health and better for worse, uh, rich or poor, blah, blah, blah. Said yes to everything you asked him to do. Was a good looking guy. Was... I'm guessing he, he took care of things, paid the bills. There was no issues with the money. We struggled for a little while, but we yeah. haven't the last few years. Okay. So what was more attractive about the guy that you had the affair with? The forbiddenness, I think. <laughs> well, that's like literally it. See, I don't think that a lot of women understand that this happens. They're oblivious to it, you know, for the most part, but they don't intend to make the guy unattractive. It's just that I think it's in women's nature to always test a man. Right. They want to know that he's competent. They want to know that he can get things done. Anything I said, anything and everything. And I think over time it got like annoying to me. Right. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. this is what most women, you know, would expect to want in a marriage or anything right. like that. You had that and Absolutely. that got boring for you. Anything for a man like that. And you just don't want him. I'm like, 
sorry. I don't know what to do. To like- yeah, I mean, and there's there's zero percent chance that you can have a respect for a man that is begging to take you back after you're the one that stepped out. I mean, that's yeah. yeah there, there's just no way there. I mean, like, I'd be interested to see. Like, I mean, it's it's all hypothetical. My guess is that you would have some respect back, and you would feel the pull if he was the one pulling away. Um, but all he's doing is, you know, he's a pinata. You kicking the shit out of him and all he's doing is pitting up candy yeah it's an interesting way to put it yeah Pretty sure. sorry sorry you back you got audio or her phone died she's off cam yeah she so i have audio i just don't have my camera that's working on my computer unfortunately got it no problem so i wanted to um pull this up because it's kind of relevant to some of the stories that you were telling and in, in your career so there's this article that got forwarded to me I'm going to put up on the screen. Um, Title is 38 year old woman decides she wants a baby claims she's been betrayed by feminism. All right. Um, I like this. So this is a story that I've, that I've heard a lot of over the last few years, you know, before I read this, just want to have a quick, quick preface to it. We've seen this over and over and over and over again. Right. So Zoe and Luna, you know, we're talking earlier on, if you guys are just getting to the show, back up and watch from the start but they were talking earlier on about prioritizing career uh luna wants to go to Prague and you know work over there for a period of time there's a guy that she's hot for zoe you know also wants to prioritize you know the career and i'm asking questions about you know have you thought about these things or contemplating you know some of these ideas about a, a potential future because a lot of women now you'll you'll start to see articles it's usually like late 30s um, that they start to talk about this maybe into the early forties if they haven't had their kids yet. What was that? I think somebody's got a text message. Okay. Um, but here it is up over here. So 38 year old woman decides she wants a baby. Uh, it reads a woman said she felt betrayed by feminism after deciding she wanted to settle down, have a family and a husband as she approached her 39th birthday at one point. Now guys, if you're watching, women's ability to have children decreases over the years. Like their peak fertility is in their very early 20s. Every year after that, the chances of a high-risk pregnancy increase year after year. By the time they hit 40, it's it's not a good idea, generally speaking, right? Uh, so this girl, Melissa Persling, recently wrote an essay for Business Insider titled, I'm 38 and single. I recently realized I wanted a child. I'm terrified I've missed the opportunity. She said it went viral in, Niso- in, sorry, in November, Hate began to pour in from men telling her that she's lived a selfish life. Uh, Persling has much has a much different account of her story. So people are telling her, you know, you've been selfish and you've missed the boat. And she's saying, no, I have a different account. When she was 22, she married a traditional man and moved to a rural community in Idaho. Uh, this is where she grew up. She wanted a simple life with children. Sorry, he wanted a simple life with children and home-cooked meals. She said, however, Persling, despite coming from a religious Christian background, made it clear to her husband to be that she did not want children. At that time, I felt very strongly I did not want children. I wasn't going to be like a traditional housewife. I knew that I wanted to pursue a career. Sound familiar, Zoe? 100%, 100%, yes, it does. She told Fox News Digital in an interview, and I felt very strongly that would never change, and I guess I was wrong. Persling said both her and her ex thought that love could conquer everything, but after 10 years, it was clear that their differences and life goals were an irreconcilable. Persling said she came, she became resentful when he would ask for a dinner or for his laundry to be done. Shocking, you know, that a man would ask for something, you know, that women would typically have done for thousands of years, like a pink job, right? Whereas I'm sure she had the expectation of him that he would cut the grass, shovel the driveway, change the tires from sn- summer to winters and stuff like that. Uh, So she became resentful when he would ask for a simple task like uh, laundry or a dinner. Uh, I did little to hide my disdain for our small town life. He was a good and hardworking man, but I don't think I made him feel that way. At 30, Persling and her ex divorced. She swore off the idea of marriage. This is her crying here on the television interview uh, when she's come to the realization, the terror of wanting to be married at 38 and have children when she left it for too long. I told my friends and family I'd never get married again. I needed independence. This is at 30 again. A fulfilling career and a space to chart my own course. Does any of this sound familiar, Zoe? Yeah. (laughs) And I didn't think marriage fit into that vision. Marriage, relationship. You know, you can substitute marriage for dating, relationship, whatever. Uh, I was content to look forward to future without a husband, children, and the trappings of a traditional life, she wrote. As she grew older, however, the fun, the carefree lifestyle, being wine and dine, going to parties began to get old. The pursuit of comfort 
and self became dull, she said. When she turned 38, terror, be terror began to take over. I was panic stricken. I really thought I was going to die alone. It scared me. I almost wrote uh, the article as sort of a warning to other women. I don't want people to miss out on the importance of things in life because they've just enjoyed themselves and because I don't think that's ever going to be, sorry, ever really going to make you happy, she said. I get another screenshot of her. I'll, you know, bust it up over the conversation with Fox Media. Uh, she wrote in the article how she felt urgency to find a stable relationship and was rethinking about wanting marriage and children at 38. I hardly recognize myself, she wrote in the article. I also began to feel selfish for spending so much time focusing solely on myself. My very existence started to feel shallow and hollow in retrospect. Personally believed uh, she had some self-discovery to, uh, to do to work on. It took time sort of through previous trauma, her parents' divorce, which she described as coming from a broken home. Sound familiar, Zoe? Mm -hmm. it took time to heal, uh, blah, blah, blah. I grew up in a fairly traditional family, but my family, but my parents were divorced. And I would say that probably had some effect on the feelings about having family coming from a broken home. It certainly has its hardship, she told. Uh, at one point, she recalled a man coming over to her in a coffee store. Okay, she's just sort of rekindling. Uh, she, okay, so this is the guys that, that, you know, she's kept in the friend zone now. Uh, and then a happy per turn to person story arrived when she describes the exception as not the rule for women in her age group. Shortly after penning the article, she dated a man who she previously befriended. Dates a guy, puts him in the friend zone. They're already talking about marriage and a future. She dished out the details. So it's a guy that I've been friends with. Guy that I've been friends with. Uh, and we've always just sort of stayed in touch. So for those watching that are men, you need to understand that women like to have a backup plan. Uh, it could be a gay dude, could be a guy that she put in the friend zone that she's not totally attractive to, but sees him as maybe husband material because he's successful, but he's not attractive enough for her to pine for him sort of thing. It's, it's pretty common for guys to end up in that zone, hoping that if they're a nice enough guy at some point she'll see his virtues in the future and want to you know settle for him or to you know go for him sort of thing these are the guys who make deals that if we're both single at 30 if we're both yeah. single at 40 if we're both single at 40 or 38 yeah. let's let's get married and have a baby right <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then it, and then it goes on to say after her epiphany by the way women hit a epiphany phase in their late 20s early 30s where they're like i think it's time to have babies uh, she wanted a traditional life. Shocking, right? In her 20s, she wanted to pursue a career and uh, establish herself, which is unsurprising because if you come from a single parent household, you see how that parent struggles. The parent often tells the child, don't rely on anybody, You know, build your own life, build your own path, make sure you've got a secure income. Uh, man, you know, like a woman needs a man, like a fish needs a bicycle. A lot of these you know, sort of sound bites. So she went from not wanting a traditional life in her 20s to wanting one in her 30s, and it hit her like a ton of bricks. This guy is the one that God's been preparing me for. This is also usually when they find God too, by the way. <laughs> I've had these relationships since they were so many butterflies and so many like, oh my gosh, checking my phone, did he text? And I realized that's not love, that's not anxiety. Actually, let me read that again. When a woman's thinking, oh my gosh, checking my phone, did he text? She's right. It's not love and it's not anxiety. It's lust for somebody. It's it it, it 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 translates into genuine burning desire. Your phone alert goes off and you wonder to yourself, is it him? But it's not. It's somebody else. It's neither love nor anxiety. It's lust for that guy. That's what genuine burning desire looks like from a woman is, you know, she's she's stoked when her alert goes off and it's him. She'll skip every other message, leave guys on red that she's not interested to. But if that guy messages, boom, wants to see it immediately. Um, never knew where I stood with these people. Again, be, see, this is the thing, right? You know, the whole, I never knew where I stood with these people. If women aren't finding clarity in where they stand easily as they expect it to be, then they'll, then they'll just not respond to them. You know, like Zoe's story where the guy Snapchatted him that night later on after the nightclub and she didn't respond. It's that thinking, like, I don't know where I stand. Like, you know, what's he's about? Why did he behave strangely? I'm just going to ignore him for a couple of days because that's what I've always been told, right? If the guy doesn't fall in line and give me what I want all the time. But the thing that women forget is that a lot of these guys, again, they're in demand. There's a lot of very attractive, beautiful women that are in their orbit that want to spend time with them. So 
they're going to be busy, you know, and, and it's going to be incumbent on women to some degree to do a little bit of the pursuing in that type of situation. But again, you know, I never knew where I stand with these guys that I had genuine burning desire for. So now she has to settle for this beta male. She has to settle for the guy that, you know, sat in her orbit for years in the friend zone, probably listened to stories about how she was going out with a dude named Chad that didn't, you know, want to commit to her or, you know, take her on a proper date. He just wants to be an FWB and, you know, use her and, uh, you know, call her over at his convenience. This is the sort of thing that I see a lot of, a lot of. Zoe, what do you think about that? With? With that story, with this girl's job. Uh, well, okay, so I'm not gonna lie. I've mentioned that to my mom. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I was in a relationship for five years and it took me this long to realize I didn't want to be with him. Could you imagine if I were to find somewhere tomorrow, like, you know, someone tomorrow and I'm with this man for three, four, five years and I'm what, 28 around that time and I have to start all over again. And then I'm like, wait, that kind of scares me because should I settle down now? Should I wait? Should I travel? Cause you know what I mean? Like I want to be able to take this time to travel and like be single. But then a part of me is like, will I be too late to have kids? But my mom had me around 36. So she's always oh, like, yeah. you can always wait. Like you, you always will have time. Like, and if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And like, that's kind of my opinion about it. Like, I still want to be able to travel and like not mm -hmm. settle down like where I live right now. I still want to be able to experience that. Right. But I mean, you've also seen a lot of these, um, like you were telling some stories earlier about some of these successful guys with their, you know, wives and children on the boats on the weekend, you know, having a good time traveling. It's, yeah. it's plausible to do that as well as a family. Right. I mean, so I agree. your mom was 36 when she had you, do you have any other siblings? I have a sister. Um, she has been in a long-term relationship and she just moved in with him. Mm -hmm. And your sister's older or younger? Uh, she's one year older than me. Okay. And same father? Uh, yes. Okay. And what does your dad say about everything in life today when you go to him for advice? Unfortunately, I have not met my father. Um, my mom's been single, since, you know, since I was born. So. So you didn't have any access to your dad when you were growing up? No. So what happened there? Um, he got into drugs and alcohol and was arrested and he was in jail my entire life. So I never really got to meet him. So, I mean, you're going to have to take this with a grain of salt, but I dispense cold, hard truth bombs. So your yeah. mom made a, your mom made a really bad choice in choosing your father. Yeah. <laughs> she chose an awful guy, you know, as an example of a father and a man, and she's giving you advice on when to have kids. Um, I think it's just her kind of supporting, like how I feel about, you know, pursuing my career and, you know, wanting to travel because she, mm -hmm. you know, she was able to travel because she was a flight attendant her entire career. And so I think that's just a, a dream of mine. I feel like she just wants to support my dream. It's not necessarily her putting in her opinion about when I should have kids ever. Like she would mm -hmm. never, if I yeah. found a, you know, you know, she would support me if I were to find a man tomorrow, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think what we're trying to drive at Zoe and I, I had a question but I was gonna I'm gonna pivot to this so understandably your mom wants you to be happy she wants to support you she's coming from a good place as most family members generally are I think what sometimes can be danger I don't know if dangerous is the right word but I think that the benefit of kind of a show like this and talking about talking to two guys that you know don't necessarily have much of a stake in in your future and you're just having a conversation is that oftentimes our our friends and our family are some of the most likely folks to not give it to us straight to protect us from bad things that might happen um and so i think it's a struggle your story specifically and i think for a lot of women growing up and and, you know, especially for women that are growing up without sort of a, and I was going to ask about this, but I, I, w was there any sort of sort of positive male influence in your life that was it a uncle or a color or anybody, a family friend that you sort of looked at as sort of the beacon for masculinity or has it always just been your mom and your sister? Um, I did have a really positive influence on my uncle. He lives in Virginia and he just flew down for my graduation with his, uh, with my aunt. 
um, they have a beautiful son and I look at them as, you know, relationship goals for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'd be, I'd be interested if you were to have that conversation with them, what kind of advice they would give you. I, agree. I think especially if you're looking at the people that you want to embody and, and asking the people, you know, we kind of have a saying and Rich is, is a part of this on me as a kind of student of, of, you know, his teachings and some other things. Is, yeah. Make sure the people that you're taking advice from are the people that you would want to trade places with, right? Or if you see people that are embodying and having the life that you want to have, they're probably pretty good, you know, role models or, or pretty good people to ask about their kind of advice and what you kind of think, what they think you should sort of do, even if they are a family. I think one of the things we try to drive at is the, this woman in this article, and I think your mother especially, having two kids post-35 and this woman mm -hmm. having a kid, maybe she's going to have a kid 30 or 40, are not necessarily the norm, but they're generally exceptions to the rule. And I think the one thing we just always want people to sort of be mindful of is that I think the biggest lie that most women are told today is that you can have everything you want and you'll never miss out. You can travel the world. You can be single. You can make all the money you want. You can go to beautiful, exotic places. You can also find the man of your dreams, pop out a bunch of kids, be it stay a whole mom. Mm -hmm. And the reality is the most unhappy demographic of people in this country are single, unmarried women with no children over the age of 40. Um, so this is kind of like our, <laughs> this is sort of my un, uh, unsolicited advice segment. But um, I, I would have a conversation with, with the Virginia folks and shout out to Virginia. That's where I'm from originally. But um, I would have a, I would have a conversation with those folks and, and get their honest opinion and kind of figure out what they did to make it work and, and take it from some people that you would that embody the life that you want to have and, and kind of get an idea of what they have to say. Well, thank you. I'll have to keep that in mind for sure. We like to take some time to take any questions because sometimes we're going on about stuff and going down rabbit holes that sometimes get confusing. Yeah. Do you guys have? Do you guys have any questions for us? Um, I don't think I do. Allie? I don't think so. You know, it's an interesting piece to like have a couple of strange men that you've never had a conversation with, you know, talking to a couple of strange women that we've never met before and entering into difficult talks, isn't it? Um, Ali, I wanted to ask you, the guy that you um, had the affair with, was he somebody that you worked with or? No. Sorry, I didn't hear you. The, oh. The ding. Sorry. Okay. No. Meat. What advice would you give to women that are younger um, based on the experiences that you've had, Ali, that you would do differently? Um, probably going back to what um, her friend Luna said earlier. I think I probably should have started going to therapy like a long time ago. Um, maybe that could have helped. I don't know. But I think when I started having these feelings, because I started having feelings of wanting to do something else, step out for at least two years before I did. Two um, years, eh? Yeah. Okay. Huh. So I, maybe therapy. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that would really work or what, but maybe. I think it's a... I think it's a really tough world for men and women today to try to operate in because guys more than ever have to be more stronger and virtuous than I think in any other time in history because women are more stronger and virtuous than any other time in history. I think women today have been told for decades now to essentially do a lot of things. Like, let me put it this way. Um, so in a relationship, um, for you know for both the gals what is it that you would consider that you bring to the table i think that um with my routine i love to cook i love to work out i love to travel i just feel like i'm very outgoing um i just feel like i get along with family well i just feel like i do have an overall package for somebody that you know and i'm kind of looking for the same thing mm -hmm. you know that share the same interests of like going out and um, traveling, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ellie? I can agree, agree with those things. I mean, definitely the going out. I've always been yeah. I was a bartender for 12 years before I got into the industry I'm in now. So I've always been like 
life of the party, the fun one, can always make the drinks for everybody, get along with everybody. And I think that's why I stepped into mm-hmm. sales after because I never met a person that wasn't a friend. Mm. Um, like ever, I literally get along with everybody and make friends at like the grocery store. Um, and also finding someone that wants to be able to go to church on Sunday with you too as well. Like not everyone has that same interest. And like, I'd be fine with someone that's not necessarily religious, but kind of would support my, you know, my religious beliefs as well. Are you Catholic or a Christian or? I'm Christian, yes. You're Christian. And do you go to church every weekend? Every Sunday, yes. Oh, you do? Yes. <laughs> and you describe, and you subscribe to everything in the Bible? Um, I try my best. Um, I'm, I'm obviously not, you know, I, I feel like as a Christian, you try your best every day to be a better person. Not necessarily, you're going to make your mistakes, but mm-hmm. yeah. So. I mean, like one of the big grievances that I think a lot of guys have when they hear women that subscribe to, to strong religious beliefs is that they're chaste, right? Because that would be one of the uh, selling features to a guy that subscribes to the same sort of religion as you, right? Like they want to marry a virgin still. Um, and what's that, Ali? <laughs> Good luck with that. We're going to find those. Yeah. So that's so that's one of the problems that, you know, guys run in today too, right? It's like okay, well, I, you know, I follow this religious belief system and here's what the book says and I follow all the rules and then they go to the church and they find women that um, aren't, right, that want to be part of that uh, belief system but don't live by every rule. And I think that, you know, if you're going to subscribe to something, then you have to do it all the way, right? You just can't do it kind of halfway or I like these two rules over here but not these ones sort of thing because a lot of guys, like a lot of guys today, hear that there's an expectation that women want a a traditional guy they want an alpha male that's going to open the car door that's going to take them out that's going to take them on vacations and entertain them and all that sort of stuff and make sure they're looked after and if there's a bang in the night and the glass breaks they're going to get out of bed and go down and deal with it while you're you know protected upstairs and you're looking after the kids or whatever like they want the traditional sort of guy but i think a lot of women today aren't the traditional kind of women that the traditional guys want. And there's a lot of those differences, a lot of those separations, you know, in a sexual marketplace and in the dating scope, when the expectations of both sides are kind of off a bit, right? Um, You know, women are always like, oh, I'm strong and independent, I can chase a career and I can do anything a man can do. But if there's a bang in the night, you know, he's not gonna go, here, you get this one, babe, because, you know, I got the last one. So you go downstairs and, you know, see what that big noise was and deal with the big bad whoever that's down there sort of thing, right? So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of moving parts. You know, I always say it's like a giant puzzle. It's not one or two things. It's like a puzzle with a lot of pieces. And I think a lot of the times today, you know, when we go out there and, you know, we're dealing with each other and we're dating and we're looking for a relationship or we're not looking for a relationship, but we're dating, you know, and if it comes, it comes sort of things. I think there's a lack of intention. I think there's a lack of... Um, there's also a lack of a lot of awareness too, right? Moff, I think that this is something that we've talked about many, many times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we got anything else on the table that we got to deal with before we wrap up? No, I'm just looking at the time. Um, I gave my unsolicited advice. Rich, what do you got? I think this is I think this is a good segment for us to start wrapping up on. The, uh, All right, let's do the unsolicited, unsolicited advice. advice. Well, <laughs> look, I, so... So I'm a father and I have a daughter, right? So I would I would sit back and take this from the perspective of what would I want for her if she was either one of your ages. And I think that oh, can I ask? She's a teenager. Okay. Um so you'd you'd want to be more intentional. So for Zoe, you'd want to be more intentional in your life and realize that it's like a runway and at some point it ends. Okay. And the, and the older you get and the more time you spend on that runway, the less time you have to get that thing off the ground and the harder it's going to be to get it off the ground. So time flies, especially when you're young. Uh, it seems like it doesn't, but time does fly because as you get older, you know, before you know it, you're going to be 30, 40, 50, you know, like time does seem to move a little bit faster. You know, the older you get, you don't have an infinite amount of it. Um, the, the most important thing to contemplate if you want a high value guy which all women seem to want. They want the successful, good looking, hot dude. They're super attracted to that they lust after that. They feel the strong connection after 
understand there's a lot of women that are competing for his attention. So you're going to have to compete as well. And the thing that men are looking for is not degrees. We're not looking for what it is that you can earn. Earn, you know, go and do that. You know, that's fine. That's that, that, that's not going to change. We're not asking anybody to go back to the 40s or 50s. But because women are viewed by men as beauty objects, and I think you know that inherently, Zoe, because that's a great picture of you. Like you photograph very well, makeup, hair all done, lighting. You photograph very well. So I think you understand the notion that women are beauty objects to men. Focus on that and also be useful to a guy, especially when you find a high value guy. Like if you're dealing with a guy that's in law school, he's dealt with Congress stuff, he's, you know, he's pursuing a career, I would be asking him questions like, you know, if he's talking about something that's going on in his life, hey, what can I do to help you out with that? Especially if you have time, because if you're working three days a week and you got lots of extra time, I what wouldn't would you spend do that it. To help him out though. Like, what would What's you that? recommend? Well, just to help. Like, what you know, if he's talking about something that's going on in his uh, world that sounds like a struggle, just say, "Hey, you know, what can I do to ease the burden for you? You know, what can I do to be useful to help you out with that project? Um, you know, do you want me to make you dinner tonight or you know, yeah, something like that?" I feel like that would be so important, especially like just having. It's a, a small gesture. But if you can feed a guy well with tasty food that's nutritious, that doesn't make him fat, you're you're setting yourself apart from the vast majority of women out there because most women can't cook today. They can't cook for shit. They'll take some frozen thing out of the freezer and they'll throw it in a skillet and it's some like pad thai shit box, whatever the hell it is, right? So just just being useful and being a, a beauty object to a guy. For Allie, um, unsolicited advice stop stop running around with the younger dudes or if you do just keep it on the down low first of all um you know we know why you do it and we know why the younger dudes do it but you got a couple of kids so that makes you a single mom out on the dating marketplace um the thing that you're going to start running into once you spend more time dating out there is that you're going to start to find a lot of guys that um might be interested in you might be interested in your beauty you know um what uh what you bring to the table in that area, but they may not be that interested in becoming a father to somebody else's kids, right? So, I mean, you're gonna have to, for somebody like you, like you're gonna have to get clear on what it is that, you know, you wanna do. The, the biggest difference, you know, between a 40 year old and a 21 year old is that a, is that the expiry date on your beauty comes a lot sooner for a 40 year old, right? Um, menopause hits, things change quickly, so you can't really afford to waste a lot of time um, on the younger guys. And at the end of the day, guys generally have a level of disgust if they hear about a large notch count. So, you know, holding it out in any way, shape or form possible is not going to be to your benefit. I mean, I hate to say it, but if your ex-husband wants to take you back and you guys have kids together, how old are they? Eight and five very young children, their lives will be so much better if they have their mom and dad in the same house. Yeah. I personally, I wouldn't take you back. Like if you stepped out on me, done. I know. A woman is a ghost if she does that to me. Uh, but you have the luxury of this guy wanting you back and he sounds like a good man. That, that would be the best thing for your kids, most importantly, and probably for you. Um, but he, but he's going to have to learn how to lead because you're not going to be turned on by him. You're not going to be turned on by a guy that goes through betatization again. Right. And you're, and you're going to competency test him. You're going to test him. You're going to see what he's made of. You're going to ask him to do things. You're going to, you know, you're going to push, push into those areas. You're going to do it inadvertently. It's not like you intend to make him unattractive or to test him. It's just, that's what women are going to do. That's why I tell guys, you have to learn how to pass these shit tests. You have to learn how to say no, but I would take him back. And then, you know, figure out the rest of it from there. Makes sense. You're probably right. Apologize profusely and learn how to cook for the man or do something that he likes. Be useful to his life. Tell him to call us. <laughs> We're going to need a long conversation with this guy. Like this. We're going to need a long conversation with him. But yeah, he's free to call in if he ever wants to. Cool. All right. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up on that note. Moff, are you doing Moff's hours tomorrow night? Yep. Do show tomorrow night, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. 8 p.m. here on the Unplugged Alpha channel. Uh, Collins, I'm not sure. I've got a couple topics I'm back and forth on, but we'll have something ready for you guys tomorrow. Yep. 
and we're going to do general shows uh, on a much more frequent basis. So um, make sure you're subscribed. You got the notification bell hit and all that sort of stuff. Read the book if you haven't read it. A lot of the stuff that is on this channel is based on the Unplugged Alpha. I may write a book for women in the future at some point. We'll see. But Good. thank you. But um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up on that note, guys. Uh, do the all the stuff for the algorithm, the like, the comment, all that blah, blah, blah stuff. Ladies, thank you so much for... Uh, you know, jumping on and sharing your stories and having some difficult conversations.